Hi everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to another video. Today, this one, I'm going to take it back a little bit to an older technique, and I want to show you the rubber band stamping technique. I'm going to take it a little bit further on my cards, do some masking, some die cutting, but really, this technique is super easy. It's a lot of fun, and you only need some office supplies to do it. So on my first card, I'm going to start off with this white cardstock panel. Now this panel is actually from a die cut. I die cut the wood grain frame die from Cat Scrappiness from some craft card stock. But I wanted the center to inlay into that frame as well. So I die cut the same frame from some white cardstock. I'll save the white cardstock frame. I can add that to another card. I can do some ink blending on it, heat embossing, a lot of different things I can do with that. So no need to throw it away. But on my insert, I went ahead and put some eucalyptus ink from Catherine Pooler, and I just used a blending brush. Now it's time to start stamping on this. I wanted a nice colored background for my stamping. To make my stamp, I need an acrylic block. I'm using this one here. It's a little bit larger than my panel. You don't have to use anything larger than your panel. If you don't have a great big one, you can do this with a small one. You'll just need to stamp several times to fill up your background, but it's totally doable. I'm going to take some rubber bands here. You can use whatever rubber bands you have on hand. These I bought from the Dollar Tree for my kids to play around with, to be honest, because they take my good ones and they ended up taking my good ones, so I'm left with these to use today. But I am going to go ahead and just string these around that acrylic block. You can wrap them around once, twice, three times. It really is up to you. These are all the same size as well, but if you have a bag that has assorted sizes, by all means use those too. It creates some really cool backgrounds with those. I'll continue just to wrap these around, making sure that I don't have too much bulk. You want this kind of flat, but you do want a lot of different rubber bands going on here different ways to create that really cool textured look. I'll go ahead and wrap a few more around, making sure I don't snap myself in the process. And again, making sure I don't create too much bulk in any one spot. So spreading them out a little bit. Once I have this how I want it, it's time to start stamping. Now for this, I will be using some Catherine Pooler inks. I find I really like these ink pads when I'm doing this technique because they have that foam pad in them. So it's squishy. It's not hard at all. If you have a harder pad, you might just need to press a little bit more to get those rubber bands that are kind of on the bottom of this. But with these foam pads, everything just kind of sinks right in. Also, these inks are, they stay wet a little bit longer. These are a dye ink. So pigment ink or dye inks will work for this because you have a rubber band, which is a non-porous surface. I inked up my stamp and then stamped it down onto my background. And look at that. It creates this really fun graphic, but kind of distressed too at the same time background. And the great thing about this is it's not one use. So I'm going to take this stamp. I stamped it down once and then I'll flip it around and stamp it a few more times to fill up my background with all these different lines. You can do this as many times as you want to and you can do it with as many colors as you want to. This cleans up very easily with just a little bit of water and wiping it down. There's a closer look at that background. You can see some of the rubber bands twisted, so you get that twisted look on there. It really is just a cool background and very quick and easy to do. Now, I'll show you how I finished the rest of this card so you can see how I created these little flowers and also the sentiment I used. I'm going to use this set of peony stamps. They are the same stamp, one's larger, one's smaller. These are from Cracker Box and Susie's Stamps. I am stamping them down with some icing on the cake ink, and then I'm going to ink blend to color them. I am not a colorer. I am not good at it. I, to be quite honest, I don't really enjoy it unless I'm in like the mood for it, and today I was not in the mood for it. So what I like to do for a lot of my coloring is ink blending. I'm using the rose petal ink from Catherine Pooler and one of these teeny tiny little makeup blending brushes. These are from Amazon. Um, you can use the Picket Fence Studio ones. Uh, the Taylor Expressions I don't think has one this small, but there are a lot of different brands that do have really tiny little ink blending brushes like this and they work perfect to color in these small images. I went ahead and colored each one 
focusing on the outside, bringing the color lighter towards the center. Then I fussy cut them with my scissors right on the line. Now for each one of my little flowers that I fussy cut, I want to go around the edges. But instead of using black like I normally do, I stamped with a brown ink. So I'll use just a brown marker to go around those edges for a finished look. Now on the centers, I'm gonna use that little marker as well and color in all the little dots from the little centers and then also the little things around the center. Um, super simple and easy to do to color in those flowers and make them nice and pretty. I think I did about six or seven flowers. I only ended up using three on the finished card, but I'll save those other flowers for another project. Now on my panel, I went ahead and set that aside while I did the flowers to let them dry. However, Catherine Puller inks do stay wet for a little bit and embossing powder is kind of finicky to work with anyway. So make sure you prep that surface really, really, really well with an embossing bag. I have a cheap one that I use. And then I'll go ahead and stamp right on that, the happy anniversary to a wonderful couple stamp. And I use some Versamark ink and my Misty to do that. Then I'll put some gold embossing powder. This is from Imagine. It's the emboss embossing powder. Comes in a bag, a little bit different. But I went ahead and heat set that and I've got this gorgeous gold sentiment on the background ready to go. Now I inlaid that into the frame. I did pop the frame up, but I kept that panel flat against the card base. I added those flowers on the bottom to finish this card off. Super simple. I have used that anniversary stamp in another card. I will leave that video linked down below. It's also linked over on my blog and the blog post as well. All right, now on to the next card. I am going to create a background that is striped. My favorite way to create an ink blended striped background is with painter's tape. I keep, it's about an inch and a quarter, maybe just an inch, and that's the only painter's tape I keep on hand. I build it up and cut it up to fit the size that I want it to be. So I wanna create a stripe that will fit my sentiment. I want a nice white bold stripe on my panel where I can stamp down my sentiment and have it be nice and bold on there. So I measured it out. I wanted about a three quarter of an inch stripe to fit that sentiment. So I cut my painter's tape down to three quarters of an inch with my paper trimmer. It really is very easy to do that and it cuts like butter. So I went ahead and cut that down and I'll place it down right onto my panel that I'll be doing my ink blending on. But now I know I have a space that is ready for my sentiment. If you have an instance like this where your tape does break on the edge, don't peel it off and start again. Just line up another piece of tape, put it down and you're good to go. No need to go over and start again. So I continued to cut pieces of that painter's tape, some very thin, some a little bit thicker, and I created a stripe background on my card panel. Then I'm going to ink blend a rainbow. I have done this technique several times. Um, nothing new. It's one of my favorite ways to ink blend, though, and create a very quick background. And painter's tape is super cheap. I always have tons of it on hand for my kids and for me, so I love to use this if I can get away with it and not break out any specialty tools. So I'm going to ink blend this rainbow. I'm using Catherine Pooler inks. I am going to speed this up because I, I think I'll go ahead and do a separate video all about ink blending and some tips and tricks that really have helped me over the years. I've been doing card making and craft paper crafting for over 11 years now and ink blending is still sometimes a little hard for me. That is until I found something that really works for me. These blending brushes from Amazon, they're super cheap, but they work wonderful for me. So you need to find your tool, I would suggest, first of all, to get your ink blending to look good. And then just keep practicing and take your time. You can't do ink blending quickly, or you can't do some ink blending quickly. Some you can get away with, but for this, you really can't, you just have to take your time. And I always blend between two colors at any one time. So here I'm going between green and blue, and then I'll just blend back and forth until I get the color I want. Then I'll go to blue and purple and so on and so forth. Now for rainbows, I try and eyeball as much as I can to get these colors spread out. I always seem to end up with one color that I have like very prominently on the background, but try your best to get all these colors on there and as even as possible. Mine never are, but I try. 
I'm going to go ahead and end with this flirty fuchsia right in the bottom corner. I wanted that angle that I put the stripes down on just to kind of keep with the theme of the card. Now I'm going to keep that painter's tape in place and do some stamping on this background. I used that same stamp that I created before with the rubber bands on the acrylic block. All I did was take some water, spray it down, and wipe it down with a washcloth. Super simple and easy to clean that off. Then you can reuse it. You can flip it over and use the other side. It really is up to you. But I'm going to ink this stamp up with some Midnight Ink from Catherine Pooler. Again, I really like these ink pads for this technique because they have that squishy pad on there. And I can get all those little rubber bands. I don't have to press too hard, and I'm not risking damaging this ink pad at all. I'm going to continue to stamp this. Now, I am re-inking and stamping every time. However, you can get sec second generation and even third generation stamping with this rubber band stamping technique, which creates even more colors for you to have fun and play around with. I am going to just continue stamping this. I stamped this quite a few times on the background just to get the look I was going for. There you can see I went in for some second, third, even some fourth generation stamping with this just to get some lighter colors of gray, kind of make it look more faded in some places. It really is just a fun thing to play around with until you get the look you're going for. Now, once I had this filled up with my rubber band stamping, it's time to reveal the magic, I guess you could say, and peel off all that painter's tape and look at the background you created. This is by far my favorite part. But peeling painter's tape, I got can be a little tricky. So I like to peel it straight back on itself. And it's inevitable, I'm gonna have a piece that wants to stick like I did here. I immediately stop once I see that, move to the other side and peel up from there. That way I don't peel up that piece if at all possible. If it does come up, you can go back and fix that later on with the little Fantastics tool or a little Q-tip and an ink pad super easy to fix. There is a closer look at that background all stamped out ready to go. It is so neat. Now for the sentiment, like I said, I did go ahead and, but I kept an opening for that sentiment, that very first stripe that I put down. So I laid that sentiment in there and using my Misty, I stamped down the Hello Crafty Friends sentiment from Cracker Box and Susie Stamps. I thought this was a very bright and colorful card that a crafter would appreciate the technique that went into it. So I created this card that said Hello Crafty Friends. If it's just for a friend, you can always mask off that little S on the end there and stamp it down. And then your sentiment will read Hello Crafty Friend. So super simple and easy to adjust those sentiments to fit your need. I matted it with some black cardstock, attached it to a card base, and that card is finished. Now on to my third one. For this card, it's going to be a Halloween card and I wanna do some die cutting on it. I grabbed my nesting circle die set. This is one of my most used die sets. I really didn't think I would use it as often as I do, but it's so fun to create some backgrounds with this. I have created a background like this before, but today it's gonna to be a Halloween card. So I grabbed some of those circle dies and I'm just laying them out to create some circles that are gonna be cut out on this background. I'm keeping it more towards the left side, except for that larger one towards the right. That's gonna be where my sentiment is in the end, but I wanna tape these all in place. Also, I wanna make sure they're spaced apart pretty evenly, um, just to make it look right in the end there. So to create some more circles on there, I did grab that smallest circle die and put it a few more places and die cut it out a couple more times on that background just to create some symmetry on this card and what I thought looked best. So I die cut that a few more times. Then it was time to start ink blending. So the part that I did the die cutting on that panel, that's gonna stay completely white. So I set that off to the side but I'm keeping it for reference to make sure I don't put too many colors next to each other. Then it's time for the ink blending. So I grabbed some Catherine Pooler ink pads and I'm using Jumbo ink daubers to do this. You can use whatever you have on hand. Just get some color on those backgrounds or those little circles. So I'm starting off with some Lime Ricky. I'm using Flirty Fuchsia as well and Orange Twist. I'm starting on the outside and making these lighter towards the center. These do get a little tricky to ink blend because they are so small, 
But what I would suggest is using a little piece of scrap paper to hold on to them so you don't get any fingerprints. Catherine Puller ink pads do react with water. They will, will react if you have any oils or lotions or anything on your hand. So just be careful when touching them while they're still wet. I went ahead and placed that down just for reference to kind of figure out where I wanted these and what colors I wanted these circles to be. So now I'll move on to Flirty Fuchsia and I'm going to go ahead and ink blend a few of those circles as well. Again, starting towards the outside, pulling that ink towards the center. I'm going for Halloween colors here so you can see I'm using the green, the purple, the orange, and then I'll also bring in some black here in just a moment. I'm again bringing that vellum in, holding everything in place with that. And at the end of these, I am taking my ink blending tool or my little sponge dauber there and just kind of flicking it off the edges. That darkens up those edges and colors them in. It creates that a little bit more depth and it also makes the ink blending look a little bit more blended than it actually is. So just a little tip there, you can see I just pull it along the edges. That really helps with the whole ink blended look. Now I colored in all of those little circles, then it was time to do some stamping on them. And this is where the fun part happens. I'm going to create another rubber band stamp here. This time I'm using a smaller block. These are smaller circles, so I don't need all that space. So I just grabbed an acrylic block that's a little bit smaller and I'm going to wrap some rubber bands around it. Again, this is totally up to you how you want this to look. You can put on just a few. You can put on a bunch. Just make sure you don't have a huge spot that has a major hill in it because it's not going to stamp right. The only stamping you're going to get is from that hill, and the rest of it won't even touch the cardstock unless you really push. Then you'll have just a major blotch where the hill is and then some stamping around it. So make sure you kind of spread them out evenly, no major hills in that. Then you can do your stamping, whatever. You have it how you want it. So again, I'm using some Midnight Ink from Catherine Pooler. I'm just tapping that stamp right in the ink pad and then stamping it onto each circle. I'll leave that largest green circle blank. That's where my sentiment's going to go. But again, doing some second generation stamping on these for a little bit of a gray look. Uh, two-toned if you will and it just really is a lot of fun to play around with this I love the look on these die cuts it it's just fun and it creates a really fun Halloween card now on some of these larger ones you can really see the rubber band stamping however I was worried about these smaller ones I was scared nothing was going to show up but it actually worked out really well you might need to do a couple stamps even three to get the look you're going for but it does work on there just move it around stamp in different positions until you get the look you want so my last one is that little orange one and I did lay these out um, so I knew that I didn't have too many colors next to each other and I didn't want to forget how I had it. So I just kept it all right there in that die cut. There's a closer look at those stamped out. So cool. I love the look of this one and it created the perfect background for a Halloween card. Now to finish this card, I wanted to add my sentiment first of all. Like I said, I kept that green circle die cut plain so I could stamp my sentiment right in there. I'm using the Happy Haunting with Drips sentiment stamp set from Cracker Box and Suzy Stamps. I do want to mention while I'm using their stamps, they have changed their website. It was so SoSuzyStamps.com, but... Um, Switched owners, a few different things happened. So now it is rubberartstamps.com. I will leave a link down in the description box below to their new website. Just so you know, don't go to the old one if you have it bookmarked. It's not going to work. There is a new website. It's been up and running for a while now, but I did want to mention that. So I stamped a few little ghost stamps as well. I have used this stamp before too. I will leave that video linked down in the description box. I've used that Hello Crafty Friends as well on cards before and I'll leave that link down below. I stamped those out with some Midnight Ink and Catherine Pooler. Fussy cut them. I also did a little bit of ink blending on them just to add a little bit of shadow and depth to those. I did that with some Twilight Ink from Catherine Pooler and I colored in their little eyes with some black marker. Now, this is where it gets fun. See all those little pieces of foam tape? That is because I have so many circle die cuts on this. I didn't want any part of this to sink if this goes through the mail. So I went ahead and added all these little bits of foam tape on the back. But I did want to show you this just so you see 
how I put it together, you can't really get away with not doing a whole lot, especially in some of those thinner places. If it goes through the mail, it's just going to get pushed down and it won't keep its dimension. But I put that, pop that panel up with some foam tape. Then it was time to inlay all those little circles and I'm inlaying those and gluing them down directly to the card base. I added those little ghosts. I added those with some more foam tape and there is the card, super simple and easy, but adding that rubber band stamping technique brings kind of the whole Halloween theme together. That's gonna do it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and all of these cards and I hope you'll give this technique a try. It's super easy and fun. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Tons of information down in the description box below so don't forget that. Happy crafting everyone.